char data types are pretty easy to grasp. Char is short for character. And if you know how to read and write in any language, then you know what a character is. First letter in your name, character. The letter you got in math class, character. That hashtag symbol that you overuse on social media, character. Any letter from any language, any single digit number, any sign or symbol, even some glyphs like the yin and yang sign are a single character. But that's a bit beyond the scope for this course. Just keep this in the back of your mind for when you want to learn more about them. But for now, just know that characters are very important in the world of programming. They share a lot of overlap with the string data type because a string of characters is what makes up a string. In fact, way back in the early days of programming, like with the language C, strings didn't even exist as a data type. You instead had to create an array of characters. But strings like desktop, downloads, C colon backslash program files that all your applications are installed in are all a series of characters that computers use on a daily basis to make your computer experience as smooth as possible. Characters play an essential role for computers being able to communicate and relay information to us. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now from here, there's not really much to go over, but let's have a quick look at how we go about using characters in two different languages, because I think it can be really helpful to see how they compare and contrast, and plus, you'll pretty much learn two languages at once. So on the left is the language C-sharp using the IDE Visual Studio, which should interest you if you want to do Windows development or want to make games using a popular engine called Unity. And on the right is language Python 3 using the IDE Visual Studio Code, which should interest you if you want to get into more general programming or data science. Alright, so here I have two brand new console projects, and if you don't know how to make a new console project in either C-sharp or Python or both, be sure to check out the video in the description. Uh, it's called how to install an IDE. And at the end of that video, I'll show you how to do that. So first things first, let's look at some basic char syntax. So over here on the left in C sharp, I'm just going to remove that that comes standard with your blank console project. And then I'm going to write char, which is casting our data type. Um, and then we'll call our variable a, and I'm going to assign a Z character to it. Now, this is how you write a character. A character in C sharp must always be in the middle of two single quotes. And it's really as simple as that. We can put any character we want here. We can put A, we can put J, we can put uh, eight, we can put the dollar sign. Any character you want can go in between these two single quotes. And there you have a char. Now over in Python, assigning chars is just a little bit different. So we can do just as we do in C sharp, we can do a equals single quote Z. However, we can also do a equals double quote Z and Python will accept either one and it will figure out that these are both a char. But you'll see if we go back into C sharp and then change these from a single quote to a double quote Z you'll see that we'll get a type error. Um, the, in C sharp, it specifically uses double quotes for strings and single quotes for chars. But again, in Python, it's pretty smart with figuring out you know, if it's a char or a string. One of the benefits to an interpreted language. And just to prove to you that this is the case, uh, I'm going to actually change this to variable B, and then we're going to do print A, and then we're going to do print B. And then we're going to hit the play button up here in the corner and you'll see down here in the output it prints both of them ZZ, no problem. I'm going to change this back to single quotes real quick. All right. Okay, so now with the basic char syntax out of the way, let's talk about escape characters. Now, what are escape characters? There will undoubtedly come a time where maybe you're writing out some story or creating like a list of names or something like that and you will undoubtedly come across the question, how do I press enter or hit tab or in insert quotes? How do I do these things? Well, that is where escape characters come into play. All right, so now let's initialize an escape character. I'm just going to cast a new variable as a char and then inside my character, I'm going to hit backslash. Now, technically, backslash is the escape character. It likes to escape the syntax of characters. Um, but I like to call the whole character as an escape character. It's, it's up for debate. But 
I'm going to hit backslash in, which is one of the most common escape characters called new line. Now, I really want you to understand how important escape characters are. If I were to, for example, replace the backslash with uh, forward slash, for example, you'll see that we'll get an error down here for too many characters and character literal. Everything within these single quotes is what's called the character literal, and it, you can only put one character per character literal. These count as two, but when you put the backslash, that counts as one character literal, which again, this is a new line escape character. And just to prove to you that it actually does what I claim that it does, we're going to do console dot right line. This is just going to print to the, con the terminal for us. I'm going to do, I'm going to print a, which is a variable that has Z in there. And then we're going to do another, we're going to do a B and then I'm just copy and paste control C control V and then we're going to do another A. So what we should see is going to print out Z and then new line and then another Z. I'm just going to run that and it's off screen. Oops, I forgot. I have to also do console dot read key. Otherwise, the console will not stay open. So hit start. It's off screen here. I'm going to bring it on the screen and you'll see that we have exactly what we should expect. Now, I know there are some of you out there probably going, wait a second, Jabril, that is not what I expect. There are two spaces in between the Z's. And let's just pause here for a second and really examine the logic of our program. So the reason that we're getting two lines in between A, B, and A when you probably expect no, no lines in between them is because the function right line itself, it does a new line for us. So it prints out Z, A equals Z. Uh, it'll print out Z and then it'll go to a new line and then it'll print out a new line and then go to a new line and then print out Z and then go to a no, new line. And I'm going to just run that one more time just to confirm that's what happens. Prints out A, goes to a new line, prints out a new line, goes to a new line, then prints out Z, then goes to a new line where it ends there. So it, it's doing exactly as you as you as we we want it to do. Um, it just looks a little weird in this context because the right line function adds a new line without really telling us it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now with that out the way, let's check out our escape characters in Python over here on the left. I'm just going to change our B variable to be a uh, single quote. So I'm just going to use single quotes because it's easier convention between the two. And we're going to do a new line. And I have that backwards. I'm supposed to do backslash. And you can see in Visual Studio Code, it'll actually slightly tint the escape characters yellow for you to help you give a little more assistance, which is nice. Um, Visual Studio regular doesn't really do that. Anyhow, a uh, new line, and then we're going to print out A, and then we're going to print out B, and then I'm just going to copy and paste one more A. And then let's run this by hitting the play button. And you'll see that we have the same exact. Uh, result that we have in C sharp and you already know why there are two lines there moving right along Let's take a look at concatenating characters Concatenating it just simply means taking a few different things and putting them together So if you have three different characters for example, you can concatenate them and they become one word or one phrase What have you that's all to concatenate means so to concatenate characters you would think it would be as easy as you know a new character C equals um, a plus a but it's not that simple in C sharp when you add two characters together the character data type takes the addition operator and turns the characters into ints in fact every single character under the hood actually has an integer value assigned to it if we take a look at this chart here which is this is the ASCII chart part of Unicode uh, you can see that every single character has some sort of decimal value assigned to it so we could take the character 2 for example and do 2 plus 2 and that will get us a hundred which is a lowercase d character but just know there aren't too many use cases for the operations like that just know that this is how it works under the hood it's interesting stuff to know but let's move on so what you want to do is you actually want to turn your characters into a string just like that and then you'll get an error um, because again when you use the addition operator on characters, they get turned into ints and you are trying to assign an integer to a string. So a way to override that is simply just write two 
um, double quotes and then just plus to it. It's like a shortcut to quickly convert uh, whatever the assignment is to a string. The assignment again is everything that's on the right side of the variable. And so now we can just add all of our characters to the string C. And so I'm just going to do A plus B plus A, which is Z plus new line plus Z. And then I can delete two of these right lines. And then I'm going to add C instead of A. And then I'm going to hit play. And I'm going to bring this over. And you can see here that it's a bit different now. Now, why is that? Well, let's take a look. Again, right line, every time you call this function, it will return to a new line. However, we used a string and only one right line. So there are no new breaks other than the one that we coded in. So it literally does print Z, go to a new line, and then print another Z, as you see here. Print Z, go to a new line, then print Z. So... That's what's going on there. Everything with programming, it's always really basic logic that, that you have to follow. And yeah. Now in Python, because Python is an interpreted language, it makes doing stuff like this really easy. All we have to do really is just do C equals, then we can do A plus B plus A. Simple as that come down to our prints. We don't need two of them, so I'll delete two of them and then just replace A with C and then save that. Hit the play button in the corner and you can see that we have the same exact result. It prints out an A, goes to a new line. I'm sorry, prints out a Z, goes to a new line and then prints to another Z as you see here. Simple, easy, God bless Python. So that's pretty much all that's to concatenating characters. Uh, let's now take a look finally at the remainder of the most important escape characters. So you already know backslash in or the new line escape character. There's another pretty important one that you should know as well. And that is backslash R. This is the return character. So what the return character does, it returns back to the beginning of the line. Now, back in the old days, this was really important to use because you would go to a new line, but it wouldn't return back to the beginning. Just wherever you left off in the previous sentence, it would just go to a new line at that same exact spot. So you had to call the uh, return escape characters to make it go back to the beginning of the line. So what happens if we were to run this in the console? Let's hit start the play button. I'm going to bring it over and you'll see that we just have one character and that Z. Even though we have Z return Z, what's happening is that it's printing out Z, but then it's going back to the beginning of the line and then printing Z again. And just to prove this, we can change this to Y. Um, and then just, just for extra proof, we can change, we can add a plus um, U and hit start play button and you'll see what happens is it prints out Z but then the return character returns back to the beginning of the line and then it prints out a Y and then it prints out a U essentially overriding our first character which is Z now in the new modern age you're not really going to use the return character too much however i bring it up because it is good to know there might be some scenarios in which you might be using an older terminal or, or an older engine or something like that and you're losing your mind that you're using the new line escape character but it's not returning to the beginning of the sentence here this is the return character use that it'll all your problems will disappear Furthermore, in most new modern programs and terminals and X, Y, and Z, the new line is actually, it actually looks like this. It always looks like new line and then return. Um, and we can demonstrate that. Interestingly enough, if we come over to Python and replace the new line escape character with a return escape character, hit save, then play, you'll see that what we get is not what we expect. It actually is a new line. Um, instead of a return. And the reason for this is because what we're using to interpret the code is something called Code Runner. And the way that Code Runner interprets a return escape character is likely like this. I, I can't verify it, but this is likely how it interprets just a regular return character. Thus, why we have a new line and a return. 
Um, and furthermore, uh, if you really want to see the difference between Code Runner and you know the terminal PowerShell that ships with Microsoft Windows, you can hit right click on the name of the Python script, Reveal in um, Explorer, and then just double click on this to run the Python script. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We have to add input here. Input will keep the terminal opening. Double click on the Python script, and there you have it. You, we have exactly what we expect. That is just the difference between two different terminals interpreting, interpreting, sorry, code. Okay, I hope that wasn't too confusing. Again, you won't really have to worry about, you know, using characters in this manner. Oftentimes, most people don't even interface with characters this low level, but it is good stuff to know um, when you're dealing with strings all the time. And yeah, let's move along. The next escape character is backslash T, which is a tab character. I'm just going to turn this back into our simple, simple string. And then I'm going to hit the start button, bring the console over, and you can see that it's just Z, tab, Z. Simple as that. Python, it's the same. Just do a backslash T, and we can hit the play button, and you can see that Z, tab, Z. Easy. So the next escape characters we're going to look at are the quote escape characters. So at some point, you might want to add the character single quote or something like that. And you go to do that. You're like, OK, cool. Single quote. Wait a second. That how do I do that? Well, of course, simply put, you just add the escape character backslash and then single quote. So this right here, these two pieces, the backslash and the single quote is the uh, single quote escape character. Um, and of course, you can do the same thing with that for string. So let's say you want to write out some quote or something. You can do a backslash and then a double quote. And that is the double quote escape character. So now if we just run this program, hit the start button, you can see that we get some really weird <laughs> string with the double quote Z, single quote Z. This is just a demonstration to show you how you can use quotes if you really need to. And now in Python, it's actually... A little bit different so we can still do the same use the backslash whoa I meant to replace that backslash and then single quote to get our um, escape character single quote for example we can hit play oh it's saying it's already running oh of course I have to uh, stop code run right click on the output and then do stop code run if you have input uh, just a quick caveat because you won't be able to hit that play button anymore but I'm gonna hit play and you'll see that we have our single quote escape character. I can replace with double quote. Same deal, right? Hit the play. And you see that. Oh, wait, I have to save it. Sorry. <laughs> and then hit play. And you'll see they have the double quote. No big deal, right? Now, how Python is a little more special, a little different, is that we can use either single quotes or double quotes for a character literal. So we can, you know, if we want to use a double quote, we just use single quotes on the outside. And then I'm going to save that and hit play. And it's the same exact thing. But if I want to use a single quote, I can change the outside quotes to be double quotes like so and just put a single quote in the middle. And then save that, hit play, and you see that we have a single quote in the middle of two Z's. So that's another benefit to an interpreted language. Uh, it might save you a bit of time there, but it's just, yeah, it is what it is. And the last important escape character is actually <laughs> the backslash itself. Um, at this point, you already know where I'm going with this, but if you want to write a backslash escape character, you just have to do backslash to escape out and then another backslash. So two backslashes will get you one. Um, and just to prove that, I'm going to remove this right there. And then I'm going to hit the start button, bring this over, and voila, Z backslash Z. And over in Python, it's the same exact thing. You just have to do backslash to escape out and then another backslash. Um, and I'm just going to save it, hit play, come on down, and there you go. Z backslash Z. And there you have it, guys. That's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with programming in terms of characters.